exercise 3F and 3G, I'm finding side length and the denominator on page 175 and slash 182 of your textbook. Now, starting with this do now question over here, uh, at the last exercise, exercise 3E, we'll be focusing on the idea of trigonometric ratios. So what are the ratios, where the numbers come from, how do we put them so that they are representative of sine, cosine, or tan. And in this situation, it says find the triangle shown, for the triangle shown, sorry, which of the following represents represents the ratio adjacent over hypotenuse for the angle A. Okay. Now for A, of course, we're focusing on this angle here. If we're saying adjacent over hypotenuse, of course, you need to identify adjacent and the hypotenuse. So, of course, hypotenuse is going to be this value here, given that it's the longest side. Adjacent is going to be the side with side length 5. So it's going to be this value over here. And then, obviously, we'll identify that as O. Okay, now we don't actually need O, but A over H gives us 5 over 13, which means the answer is B. Okay. So the idea is we're just identifying A, O, and H in order to make sure that we have those values there. Mr. Lamb is so good at doing circles. Yes, that's definitely freehand. Uh, now, going to today's content over here, uh, I do want to mention on your calculator there are a couple of settings. Uh, Quite of settings that you might not use until later in the year. However, uh, please make sure your calculator is in degrees mode. If you get an answer when we're working with angles and it doesn't really feel right, as in it's completely off or it's a single digit when it's not meant to be like 50 or whatever it is, then it might be in radian mode. So if you go to, and I need to be able to do this on this calculator as well, if you go to second and then as in the yellow button there, I'm assuming everyone else has this calculator, just so you can see. Uh, and then you hit mode, so the top left button, so second and then mode, it'll give you a bunch of settings and a bunch of numbers as well. You'll see for option number three, it says DEG, that stands for, of course, degree, whereas option four stands for, that is RAD, RAD, which stands for radian. Now, you guys don't need to know this, but the idea is that radian is just another way to measure angles. Just like we have feet, and feet versus centimeters or whatever it is, we have degrees versus radians. So just make sure when you go to second mode, you're going to press the number three so that all your numbers are interpreted as degrees. Okay, that's it. Awesome. All right, for this content over here, we're focusing on the idea of finding the side length in this specific question. So if the angles and one side length of the right angle triangle are known, the other side length can be found using sine, cosine, or tan. Now, depending on which ones we know, so we always know the angle in this situation, but depending on which side length we know, we're going to be using sine, cosine, or tangent. Now, if I direct your attention to this example over here for a second, as you can see, we've got the triangle, we've got 30 degrees, we've got 3 in the hypotenuse and x on the opposite, right? Of course, we label A, H, and O. Now, what I'm focusing on is, I've got 30 degrees, I've got the O and the H. So which identity, sine, cosine, or tangent, uses O and H? Of course, then we would refer back to sine, which is so, ka, toa. There we go. We'd refer back to this. We're saying, okay, we've got O and H, which refers to this one over here. So I'd say the sine of 30 degrees equals to X over 3. Now, I can't leave my answer like that because we're looking for x, not sine 30. So, I just like in our normal linear algebra, I multiply 3 on both sides, and then I get x equals to 3 times sine 30. Now, of course, uh, if you've got a calculator and a question asks for, let's say, two decimal places, three decimal places, I would put that in the calculator. I'd say, okay, 3 times, and then, you, of course, you guys are aware there's a sign button in the left-hand side, the middle left. And if you type 30, you don't need to type the degree sign because your calculator is already in degree mode. So it's already interpreting any number you put next to sign as a degree. You can, if you'd like, close the bracket, hit enter, and it'll give you 1.5. Now, does that sound about right? Yeah, it sounds about right. If you've put in and your calculator is in radian mode, you might get something drastically different, like 0 0.03, or you might get 50, or whatever it is, in which case you know you've done something wrong, it's best to double check the setting your calculator is in. I'm not going to go through this one too much in detail, but just very briefly, similar idea, except instead of looking for O, in this case we've got A, and we've got the H over here. So A, of course, we know that it's a H, I'm going to refer back to here, that is our cosine identity over here. 
So it's cosine 42 degrees equals the A over H, multiply it out, put it in your calculator. So if the question says find the value of X in the equation cosine 20 degrees equals the X over 3, correct two decimal places. Once again, very straightforward. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. So it's 3 times cosine of 20 degrees equals to X. Now, my question is, what is wrong with me writing it out like this? Cosine 20, and your calculator will have a bracket, 20 times by 3 equals to X. If I just put that in the calculator, what's wrong with that? Yeah. Correct, but it also implies what? If I just put the bracket there, it implies with cosine 20 times 3, which would mean cosine of 60 degrees, which is not what we're looking for, yeah? We're looking for 3 times cosine of 20. So we put that in the calculator. I'd like to put it at the front just so that we know it's all separated. So cosine of 20, which gives us an answer of 2.8. 2.9. I lied, sorry, 2.8 was correct. There we go, 2.82. Two decimal places. Are we happy with that? Any questions? No? Uh, let's put this into practice with one of our actual triangles. I'm going to go with B. Okay. So over here, I've got this triangle thing. What's the first thing I do? Yeah. Thank you very much. So we're obviously identifying H first. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to identify my adjacent, which is the line that's touching the angle I'm looking at. And of course, the line opposite is going to be the opposite. Now, which two values am I using, Samuel? Which two values am I using? Either I know or it's unknown. The pronoun we're looking for. Correct. So which sides are those? The adjacent and the hypotenuse, correct? The adjacent hypotenuse, I refer back to my identities over here. Of course, that is my cosine. So I'm going to end up writing cosine or cos of 26 degrees equals to adjacent, which is x, over 5, which is my hypotenuse. Multiply them out. Now, you don't have to write every single step, by the way. So I'm going to skip forward and write x equals to 5 times cosine 26, which is equal to, put that in my calculator, cosine of 26 is 4.49. Now, does that look about right? Yeah, I know it's about right because it's shorter than my hypotenuse. Yeah, awesome. If it's longer than my hypotenuse, obviously I've done something wrong because the adjacent can't be longer than the hypotenuse. All right. Uh, last bit of content for this, uh, these two exercises. Uh, if we have unknown values in the denominator, it's the same process except it's slightly different, right? So the idea is that we still find those, identif uh, those identities, sub in those values, but we would have to be able to uh, rearrange it so that we end up with the pronumal we want, okay? So find the values of the pronumals, correct to two decimal places, same idea. Now, in this situation, it does matter which value we're looking for. Let's say, let's start off with looking for x, okay? Which identity should I use? B before I do that, to make this answer easy, what should I do first? Thank you very much. Identify, so I'm going to say h, the opposite over here, and the adjacent. Now, which identity should I use if I'm looking for x? So what do I know? What side angle do I, side length, sorry, do I know? O, right? I know O, so O has to be in the equation somehow. I'm looking for X, so I know I'm going to be using O and A. If I'm using O and A, of course, that's going to be tangent. Because T equals to O over A. So I'm going to write tangent of 28 degrees equals to O over A, which is 19 over X. Now, of course, you guys are generally familiar with linear algebra. I'm going to multiply both sides by X because right now it's divided by X. So I'm going to write X times 10, 28 degrees equals to 19. Now, obviously, I can't just put that in the calculator, right? I can't put X in the calculator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides now by 10, 28 degrees. And if you're not writing this down now, it'd be a great idea to write this down. So the first thing I did was I wrote the identity out, tan 28 equals to 19 over x. I multiplied both sides by x to get rid of the fraction. 
And then once I got rid of the fraction, unfortunately, I do have to make x by itself, uh, x the subject, sorry, so I do have to divide again to make a fraction. So it's 19 over tan 28 degrees. Now, putting this in the calculator, you guys are generally should be generally familiar how to put fractions in the calculator. Uh, you don't have to, you could just go 19 divided by and then write tan 28 degrees. Just make sure and include the brackets there. So x equals 2, once I put that in the calculator, 35.7, and I believe it's a two decimal places, so does that look about right? Yeah. Are we certain it's about right? Unfortunately not, because I don't know the hypotenuse. So it looks about right. It's not stupidly longer or shorter than 19, but I don't know what the length hypotenuse is. Because if our hypotenuse ends up being shorter than 35.73, we've done something wrong. Now let's do, let's do y. So same idea. I'm looking at, okay, I've got 19, which is O, and I'm looking for y, which is our h. So, of course, I'm going to be using sine, because this is our identity here. So, I'm going to write sine of 28 degrees equals to my opposite, which is 19, over my hypotenuse, which is y, and I'm going to skip a step now. Instead of writing times by y on both sides divided by sine, I'm going to go straight to writing y equals to 19 divided by sine 28 degrees. Does it make sense what I've just done? Yeah. yeah. So instead of doing the whole process of multiplying by y, dividing by sine, I've gone straight into re rewriting in this format. And this is acceptable in an assessment situation. Once you've done that same idea, I'm going to go ahead and type 19 divided by sine of 28, make sh making sure to include my brackets, and I end up with y equals to 40.47. Now, with those two values there, does that make sense? Yeah, generally speaking, that makes sense to me. Our hypotenuse is 40 point something, and our x value is 35 point something. Sweet. Any questions for me? Go for it. Um, if the question asks for it, do you then... Actually, never mind. No, all good. Lovely. Uh, if there are no further questions, I'm going to stop the recording. Sweet.